All right, welcome to that Sin Show, man. We're back. You might be asking, where's the wizard? He's gone for a little while, but he'll be back again shortly, I'm sure. Now, we got a pretty cool thing going on. I just watched a, a new awesome episode of The Mantis, this beautiful synthesizer by Chris Huggett. If you don't know him, he's responsible for the Oscar, the Wasp, the Supernova. All right, so let's go check it out, man. Without further ado, let's go with that Sin Show. All right, man, here it is, the Mantis, a unique duophonic hybrid analog synthesizer with dual filters, patches, and full USB control. You can power this beauty with a battery, 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 but don't let me do all the talking. We'll go over here and check it out. But for those of you who don't know and didn't see the last video, this is Chris Huggett, one of the, probably the greatest synthesizers of all time. I would put him up there with all the legends, you know, Dave Smith, Mr. Moog, all right? So we scroll down, this is what he invented, man. The legendary wasp, which I'll show you a cool little video in a second about that. And then he made the Oscar, man. Another from Oxford Synthesizer Company that his parents gave him the money to start so he could get this project going. In 1981, the year of our Lord, all right? So we jump over here. Let's check this out for real quick. Let's just watch the video with the boys. WM. All the way from the UK, just came back from NAM, a successful right. NAM, I heard, and you have a new keyboard. Tell me about this one. I do too. This is the PWM Mantis. Uh, this is a project that I embarked on with the late Chris Huggett. We've mm -hmm. honored him here with his signature on there. Man, that's a beautiful little touch they did there. I think that is very, very classy. And he is a British synthesizer designer who is responsible for the Wasp and the Oscar from late 70s yes, and 80s. Indeed. I got to know him when I was working previous job for Novation, where we made the Mini Nova together, Circuit, Circuit Monostation, Base Station mm. 2, Peak. So here's the Wasp and the Oscar. Let's jump over. This is, this is the Oscar right here from Music Track. I'll throw the whole video down in the comments. Great site. Even looks amazing. That's Chris Huggett's man. And we jump over here. Here's the beautiful wasp. So that's the two he invented, man. And that is absolutely amazing. And finally, there is the summit I left before that one, but that's also, you know, another mm -hmm. synth of his. Summit. What we've done here is we've taken um, two Wasp oscillators uh, from that start, made them duophonic on this. So you've got two analog signal paths. And then we've taken the filter from the Oscar, which is again, a dual filter and pop that in there. So it's I mean, so you're saying we got two wasps and an Oscar in this baby. So I don't know if everybody understands how amazing this is. This is, I gave the Taiga keyboard synth of the year, but I think this is gonna be synth of the year. Kind of two wasps plus an Oscar, kind of greatest hits of those synths brought amazing. modern with USB and MIDI. So it'll sit in the studio, it'll go on the road and uh, you've got that kind of beautiful British. Just so, just to remind you, it's this, two of them, all right? Two of these, two, and this. All right, I just gotta remind you how amazing this thing is because I think it's getting lost Classic on a lot of people. up to date. And when you say duophonic, you're meaning legit. You're not talking paraphonic. We ain't talking where paraphonic. Kind of does two notes. This is legit duophonic. duophonic. Has its own baby. envelopes, its own filters, its own LFOs, its own analog path, like you said. But it can also be paraphonic, right? That's right. So we've brought this new concept of quad paraphony. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. It is now. But there we go. So two of the signal paths then split so that you can assign two different notes as you play to one of each of the oscillators on each path. So you end up with four notes playing the four oscillators, and that's quite good for playing chords and 
you know, pads and... All right, so you... A lot of people are like, do a phonic, there's just going to be two notes. No, man, you can play chords on this beauty. This is a really, 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 really amazing synthesizer. Uh, more rich sounds. And the cool thing about duophony, if someone's saying, well, what does it matter just having one more note? Mm. If I have two notes, I can imply chords, I can imply key signatures yeah. uh, that you can't with one note. When I, all right, of a sudden right. I'm doing parallel notes, all of a sudden now I know what key I'm in. And, and that's right, so Danny that's Boy. why I like a duophonic synth much more than a monophonic synth. Exactly. You take, man, this blows the mini Moog out of the water. Take the mini Moog, send it back to the past with my beard. This is amazing. So I got to play with this a little bit, and I got to say, there's an awful lot of synthesis power packed into a fairly uncomplicated front panel. I can get man knob per action, man. To everything, I'm not squished. I can read everything, mm. uh, and there are a lot of controller features as well. Sure, we really wanted to provide one-to-one -one control so that you can we just say there's nothing cooler than throwing on a sports jacket over a t-shirt with your logo on it i think that's cool you can get straight to a parameter turn it and it's going to happen um we've kept the mod matrix fairly simple so there's a lot of control on here mm -hmm. for example after touch um, after touch everyone's got after touch got these wide. days you've got an expression pedal on the back all of these things will appear in this matrix and you can pick a parameter you want to control. You can pick a source if you want to use the envelopes, the LFO, or just straight, mm -hmm. which is where you do to full on. And then you can then add a control to it. So you've kind of got this times this equals this, mm -hmm. yep. if you're thinking mathematically. But My math it's really is quick to assign that kind of stuff. And then you can just grab the filter, grab the mods, and um, just you know change the sound really simply. Right, and if you want to see sounds, any voice. modulation just quick, you just like, all right, how is oscillator two sheet being modulated? It's like, oh, envelope yep. one, as controlled by the joystick. There you Done. go. Done. Like I can see. Chris Huggett was known for his beautiful, beautiful design. See it right away. Very handy thing. So now let's start playing this thing. Yeah. Um, you play and I'll tweak, then I'll play and you tweak. We'll go back and forth a bit. Okay. El okay, great. I'm going to start with a sound that illustrates how the filter works really well. The kind of two peaks moving in and out. I've assigned that to aftertouch on this patch. So, All right, so here we go. Two filters, that's going to give you a very vocal, vowel-y yeah. kind of thing. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, boy, Danny. Man, if you like making noise, this thing is a must-have, I, I gotta say. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get that face on straight away, <laughs> kind of that, whoa. Okay. Let's but check this out. Let's try out the voice panning on this one. It's okay. really, really cool, so. Voice panning. Put your headphones on for this. Wish I had four hands sometimes, man. So do some other people, I think. Do you haven't noticed that little mantis is a cool touch too, right there next below those three knobs? So I noticed you have sine wave as a choice of oscillators. Sure. We get that request a lot here at Sweetwater. People yeah. want sine as a starting. Um, and with that sine wave. Knob to the right, you get addition. Let's do it. So this sounds nice. This is the kind of sounds I'm into.
And that sounds nice. Just sounds really nice. So I see the last wave shape is WT. What's that? We've added an additional wavetable here. So it's to add more sonic possibility. It's kind of dig more digital grunge. Yes. There's like seven segments to it. You can sweep through them with shape, and then you can process that through the analog signal path. So of course that means all of the control sources could be sweeping that. Quite right. Cool. Quite we'll right. That. All right, you get the idea. I'm gonna throw the whole thing down in the links. I think it's absolutely awesome. Again, this beautiful thing, I'm gonna throw this, I'm not affiliated with Sweetwater, but I'm gonna throw their link down at the bottom. If you wanna go buy this thing, go buy it. I don't even think I'm gonna do an episode of the gas station this week, because this is the gas for me. If I can come up with some funds for this baby, I think I might get it. Just, you know why I'm gonna get this thing? I'm gonna get this thing because I think it's gonna go down in history as probably one of the greatest synthesizers ever invented in the year, in the 20s, all right? So what, we gotta go by the 20s. This is year 2020 something. So of the 20s, when history goes on 100 years later, this will be one of the greatest synthesizers ever to be put out and the last synthesizer by the legendary Chris Huggett. So go pick it up if you want it. And if you wanna know the specs right here, let's go over the specs real quick, then we'll end this so I can go get myself some supper. Duophonic hybrid, 200 patches. All the patches can be overwritten, 100 factory presets. So this, I mean, this is coming with presets. So you can pull it right out of the box, which I love to do, throw it on the table, tweak it to your heart's content. And then you got 100 user presets, all set to in it. Duophonic, two analog signal paths, mathematically generated oscillators, so digital. Analog signal path designed by Chris Huggett. Two oscillators plus a sub oscillator per voice. Sine triangle, all the usual suspects, pitch modulation, oscillator one sub follows oscillator one parameters, oscillator drift, multi-mode VCAs, two analog filters, one signal path, low pass, band pass, high pass, 12 dB, 24 dB, cutoff, mod, res, width, pulse, filter width modulation, key track, two LFOs, four wave shapes per oscillator. Got fade in, fade out. We got panning going on. We got two envelopes. Envelope one is normalized, ADSR, sustain, repeat, ring modulation, mixer. Second mix is oscillator noise, first mix is the two oscillators. Third mix is oscillator plus noise and ring modulation. Can you imagine the sounds you're gonna get out of this thing? Like you said, it's two wasps in there and one Oscar. That is a manage a trois that we can all you get involved in and not get in trouble with. All right, look so man, it's got all the goodies. Got uh, six arpeggiator types. I don't think you can go wrong with this, man. Like I said, this is it. This is the synthesizer, I think, of 2024 and of the 2020s and maybe of the 2000s in general. I had the Taiga Keybell up, up there as number one, but this is now taking the lead in the synth horse race. Synth of the year. P, W, and Mantis, for sure. And that's it, my friends. That's that synth show. Enjoy your evening. I might be back. I might not. A stream might pop up. It might not. My beard went away just as quick as I'll go away. Slow, slow.